This is the Talking About the Hoosiers podcast, presented by HoosierIllustrated.com. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hoosier Illustrated recruiting update. We have a basketball episode today. Some uh, exciting news for Indiana basketball recruiting, especially, I mean, let's just jump into it. Indiana has a big game against Kansas on on Saturday, and we talked quite a bit about it on the Talking About the Hoosiers podcast. But one thing we didn't touch on is Indiana has at least three major recruits going to be in attendance. Jason Sanin, Bryson Tiller. No, not the singer Bryson Tiller. <laughs> five-star forward for Overtime Elite. And then Indiana native, who I'm sure many of you know, Trent Sicily. Kyler, it's, I mean, a huge day for Mike Woodson's program. A real chance to get a huge jump on the 2025 class. What kind of have you been hearing? Yeah, so, um, yeah, big game this weekend, obviously. It's a big game, and usually big games like this, you do have, you know, your top-tier recruits, your guys that you are recruiting um, the hardest that you try to get there um, for these games, whether it be an unofficial or an official visit. Um, But yeah, you mentioned it. We have at least three names confirmed and they're three pretty big names that will be on campus this weekend. I'll go ahead and start with the guy that everyone knows. Um, They've known for the past four years, especially if you're an Indiana native. Um, 2025 four star power forward um, Trent Sisley out of Heritage Hills High School. Um, (laughs) Sisley, I feel like um, he's at pretty much every month. He's at least at a game Um, for Indiana. he's, He's visited Indiana multiple, multiple times. Um, which is a pretty easy drive for them, you know, come from Santa Claus, Indiana to Bloomington. Um, and he's visited Indiana, you know, for the past three years and everything. He, he was offered um, before he even played a single high school game. And he's really built a strong relationship with Indiana, especially assistant coach Brian Walsh, who's just done a really good job um, of keeping in touch with Sisley and, you know, building that relationship. But um, obviously Sisley, just a very versatile forward. Um, you know, he can make plays from behind the arc and he's improving a lot in that area, but highly athletic, highly powerful. He makes plays, just great plays off the dribble, um, especially around the rim. He, he's an elite dunker, um, a guy that just has really good IQ, um, a lot of strength and a guy that's just getting better and better every time I see him. So, um, Obviously, Indiana's grown a big relationship with him, so, you know, that'll continue. I think his last time he was in Indiana or at Indiana was Hoosier Hysteria, so not too long ago. So he'll he'll be in attendance, and then we move on. We've got two five-stars um, that are going to be on campus. One of them will also go ahead and start is um, six-foot-five wing, Johnson – Jawson Sannon, uh, kind of a hard name to uh, say out of my mouth. But uh, um, Indiana recently extended an offer to him last month. Um, the big thing about him and Bryson Tiller, both of them are 2024 reclass candidates. Um, those things haven't really been made public or, you know, hasn't been confirmed, but there's been a lot of talk in the recruiting world that those guys are two, uh, there, there are just two options that you could see potentially reclass up, um, to the 24 class. They are both 2025s, both five stars, but with Johnson Sannon, just a really athletic player has a real athletic build um, to his frame um, with the strength and the speed to go with it. Um, plays with an extreme amount of balance on both ends of the floor. Um, you know, that really, really helps him become a true rim protector and a guy that can beat the defense consistently and finish above the rim. Um, had a breakout year this summer, uh, especially at the late end of summer, which really saw him shoot up in a lot of the rankings. Um, I can't remember exactly where he's rated. I think he's the number 10 overall prospect, according to the 24-7 sports, um, the number two small forward in the class, um, the 2025 class, that is. So just a real crafty player. Um, defensively, can guard positions one through three. Um, just a guy that's just really exploded on the scene. Um, a guy that, you know, a lot of high majors, you know, including Alabama, Kansas, um, LSU, Arizona, Syracuse, a bunch of other those um, types of schools are involved in his recruitment. So to get him on campus, you know, especially with a game of this magnitude, pretty big for Indiana, especially for, you know, they, they only offered him last month. Um, but he has been on the radar, you know, pretty much all summer. I, I think it's Kenya Hunter um, and you see Roseman have both kind of tag teamed that one um, as far as the recruitment um, are concerned. So um, I, don't, I don't know if there's anything else I want to add on to that. Um, he is from Vermont Academy, so he's a Vermont kid as well. So I will throw that out there. Um, and then obviously we'll move on to Bryson Tiller, who you confirmed is not the rapper. Um, this is the five-star power forward. Um, so his, his recruitment is, um, as far as with Indiana, he was on Indiana's radar for a little bit. Um, and then it kind of fell off a little bit. You know, you didn't hear much about it, but he's right back in it now. Um, he's a six-foot-nine forward. Um, 
he just came off of a visit to Kansas, ironically. So he was in he was in attendance um, for Kansas's win over Missouri over the weekend. So um, he's out of Atlanta, um, plays for Overtime Elite. Uh, Mike Woodson and the staff were in attendance for the Overtime Elite game the night before the Auburn game um, to check him out. And all the and I think there's two or three more kids on Overtime Elite that Indiana is also looking at um, as well. But the, they really took a chance or really took a look at Bryson Tiller. Um, five star forward, number six overall player, according to 24 seven sports. Um, obviously we know what the major ties are with Atlanta, with Mike Woodson and just your Roseman. Um, so obviously he's going to be a guy that you can look at. So he's a highly athletic forward, great size, great length at his position. Um, he's one of the best in the class at getting to his spots and finishing at all three levels. I would say, um, extremely versatile player, um, that you can really play multiple positions. You know, he, he's good about taking his defender off the dribble scoring, off the catch, you know, this, those type of things. And, you know, as a defender, his athletic ability and length make him really locked down at times. He's a guy that probably can guard five through three, I would say, um, consistently. Just a lot of length and everything. He, and he has over about, I would say, over 20 offers or so um, for some high-caliber schools, Auburn being one of them, Alabama, Cincinnati, Florida, Georgia, Louisville, North Carolina, those types of schools. So a lot of the high majors are involved with him. So the fact that Indiana can get him and Santa Sonnen, him. Uh, how do you say his last name? Sanon? Is it? I think it's Sanon. Sanon, yeah. Always forget how to say his last name. Very, very unique name. But, uh, you know, just the fact that you can get those guys um, on campus at the same time, you know, that's pretty that's pretty great, especially if they're going to be reclass candidates. What's right now, all we know is that Liam McNeely is coming in next year. Um, so Indiana's got to really start building, um, you know, those spots and really filling those up because um, – there's going to be some movement next year, I would say. Obviously, you're going to lose a couple guys to the, the, the draft and, you know, potentially the transfer portal. So you got to start building, um, you know, those those type of players right now. Yeah, I mean, when you look at Woodson, what he's done, he's kind of brought, especially in recruiting, he's brought Indiana back into the, like, relevance of the top uh, top guys. I mean, yeah, there's they've lost some. Boogie Flynn is one that's probably going to come to – come to mind for a lot of people when you think of Mr. Kroots, but it's a couple of years ago prior to Woodson, especially in the Archie era, Archie was getting some of the recruits, but they weren't in the conversation for the every, like these top guys as consistently as Mike Woodson has been. And when you are, you're, you're going to lose, you're going to lose a lot of battles, but you're going to win some too. And if Indiana can win one or two of these big, if Indiana can win two of these guys, you immediately have one of the best classes in 2025. Absolutely. You know, Lane McNeely is already a five star. Then you've got the potential chance of uh, of um, Jawson or Bryson, you know, those guys um, potentially reclassing up to the 24 class. That would be huge for Indiana. And these guys are they could do that. You know, the, the times I've seen them, they are physically ready, I would say, for the college level. They are talented enough to go ahead and skip that class um, and become become an impact player right away for Indiana. So. Um, you look at that and you mentioned it, you know, and Mike Woodson has brought Indiana back to a national level when it comes to recruiting. And obviously he's going to recruit a lot of players. He's got a lot of offers extended in the 25 class, both locally, you know, in the state and then both, you know, nationally with the top guys. Um, he's not going to win all of them, obviously, but the fact that you're in these conversations, you know, towards the very end, um, I feel like, you know, he is a part of the last, you know, group of five, group, you know, the last five in any player's list. Um, for the guys that he really is recruiting hard. So you're going to win some. Um, you're going to lose a lot. So you just got to remember that and everything. So um, Kentucky, Kansas, Duke, North Carolina, those guys fall in the same realm. So um, the fact that Indiana's in there, Mike woodson has got Indiana in there, you know, competing for these high-level guys is huge moving forward. Yeah, you said it. I mean, you mentioned the 2024 class, and there's a big name that a lot of – there's been a lot of rumblings about. Uh, we saw a couple of days ago Truly Donovan posting a uh, Dairy Queen gift. Clearly, I think, was referencing Derek Queen's recruitment, who it seemed for the longest time it was Maryland. I mean, his crystal ball is still Maryland, but now it kind of seems like there's some rumblings that it might not be the sure thing that we once thought it was. And with his, I, one of his best friends, uh, Liam McNeely, Montverde teammate, in his ear, he asked him, he, he called, Are you, is uh, Derek Queen going to answer the call? So. Tyler, what are you kind of hearing with Queen's recruitment right now? I, I can't say for sure that Derek Queen's going to answer the call, but he's definitely interested in hearing the ringing right now. But um, I will say that the wins, you know, according to Trilly as well, and then what we've heard, um, you know, on, on the Who's Real Illustrated side, um, the, the wins have definitely shifted towards Indiana, it feels like. So obviously, 
Um, Maryland's still going to be in there competing right now. Um, you know, and I think, you know, this recruitment has been kind of a weird one, I would say. It's been a long, drawn-out one right now, and it's still not finalized whatsoever. So I feel like you got a little bit more longer to go. I, I would think right now my gut feeling is you still probably have about a month to go um, when he makes his decision. But it seems like Indiana – is in first place right now. It seems like they, they took the lead in this race and then Houston and Kansas, they're still involved in it, but I don't expect them to be really um, involved down the stretch. I think it is going to be down to Indiana and Maryland um, when it's all said and done, but it feels like Indiana's got the slight edge. I mean, let, let, we, we know the relationship that Indiana, Mike Woodson, the whole staff have with the Montbert Academy program, getting someone with Lee McNeely, who's already a teammate with Derek Queen, who desperately wants him, you know, in an Indiana jersey next year alongside with them. You know, they're the best of friends. They have a really strong relationship. So the fact that you've got already an IU commit, you know, on the same roster as Derek McQueen, Derek McQueen, Derek Queen, um, <laughs> on the, uh, <laughs> on the Mont Bird, that's, that's so funny to me. But, uh, um, you know, the fact that you've got him on the team right now and he's just chirping his ear nonstop, you know, that's huge for Indiana. So, um, he, we can't say for, for sure he's going to Indiana right now, but the way things are feeling right now, it, it seems pretty, pretty strong. Yeah, I mean, Derek Queen, the basketball player, not the Cars uh, racer. <laughs> not the one. Not Lightning like McQueen. <laughs> but I will say, I mean, it seems like it's Indiana and Maryland. It seems like those are the top two dogs. It, but with Kelvin Sampson at Houston and Bill Self at Kansas, you really can never count them out. As Trilly Donovan has said about uh, Kansas – and Bill Self specifically. Bill Self is a uh, bleeping gangster. He is a gangster. And when it comes to recruiting, Bill Self tends to come in there and just steal big guys. I mean, consistently you see him come in kind of late in the recruiting process and win these battles against Blue Buds. So it's, again, you really can't count him out. But again, I do think it's Indiana, Maryland are the top two spots. And I think a big thing for Indiana has been Woodson's development of bigs. I mean, you look at Trey Jackson Davis getting to the NBA, and now you're looking at what he's done with Khalil Ware, where he's being mocked uh, late first round, like round pick 22 to 25 is kind of where I keep seeing him. It's obviously still early, but last year, Khalil Ware had a terrible freshman year. I mean, Dana Altman and him really never seemed to coincide. So Woodson's ability to kind of get through and really coach these bigs up it's proven to be a huge strength, especially in the recruiting. And we're seeing it with Bryson Tiller, another full, uh, another power forward who could see that and be like, Hmm, this is a guy that can get me to the next level. Absolutely. And before I touch on that a little bit, um, the reason why I don't feel like Kansas is going to be really in the running when it's all said and done is because they've already got five star center for Badunga coming in. Yeah. So you already look at that. And I, I think the bait from what I hear, um, there is a potential chance that Hunter Dickinson could return if he wanted to as well. Mm -hmm. So you got throwing that. I think Derek Quinn's a kid that wants to come in and play right away. Um, so I, I don't think Kansas is in there, but you honestly, you obviously just can't count them out at all. So yeah. uh, luckily, Indiana's already got a 1 0 advantage over Kansas, you know, with the uh, McKenzie and Baco recruitment there. So, um, but you mentioned it pretty well there. Um, just the development of bigs, I think, is what is catching Derek Queen's eye. Um, I, I think he really did want to watch what Mike Woodson was going to do with Khalil Ware um, for these first, you know, five, six, seven games um, that they had. Um, it, it's already, you know, Khalil Ware's light years better than what he was last year, you know, with Oregon. He's coming in and he's playing like a five-star McDonald's All-American um, that he was, you know, that he was going into Oregon. Um, and his motor's changed. His motor's just excellent now. Um, he really is Indiana's best player on the floor. And I think a lot of the bigs are looking at that and seeing what, you know, Mike Woodson did with Tracy Jackson Davis, you know, what, what he did with Kalo Ware is very, very enticing to them. Um, and that's going to be huge moving forward. So, you know, these bigs, they want to go to the NBA. Any player wants to go to the NBA. Um, they're always going to look and see what Mike Woodson did with the program, the, the development that he did with Tracy Jackson Davis, Jalen Huchavino, and now Kalo Ware. And I'll even throw in someone like a Malik Renew as well right now, just seeing what they, they've done right now and then what he's really developed them into being. Um, that's what kids want to see. That's what parents want to see um, out of programs. And that's what that's when the top programs in the state, or not in the state, but in the nation, you know, that's how they recruit. You look at the resume. Um, you look at the resume of a Duke, you know, Kansas Bill Self, you look at that um, and seeing what they've done to get them into that next level. And, all, and obviously Kentucky. Obviously Kentucky's known for development and getting kids, yeah. guys to the next level. So um, it's pretty big. So we'll just see with Queen. Um, 
and then we'll, uh, you know, we'll go from there. But uh, I thought I thought it'd just be nice, you know, obviously want to hop on there and try to give a recruiting yeah. update every now and again and everything like that. So big weekend, big, big weekend. And, you know, with the three confirmed names that we do have, there's still some names that are trickling. You know, we're trying to work out and see who are all going to be there. A um, couple of local prospects that I'm reaching out to right now to see if they're going to be there as well. So um, expect a little bit more players, um, you know, besides those three. Mm-hmm. Um, but we'll obviously have those confirmed at who'srealustrated.com once we uh, once we finally get those finalized. Yeah, you did the plug for me. I mean, for all things IU Athletics, follow Indiana underscore FRN on Twitter, Facebook, and check out the who'srealustrated.com website and make sure to hit subscribe on YouTube and Spotify. We have a ton of coverage of recruiting Indiana basketball. You are out there going to high school games weekly. Yep. Make sure you're following Kyler on Twitter. He has updates from Indiana basketball games pretty much every week. Uh, we have recruiting news on the website, on Twitter. We are pumping out recruiting news. It's not just basketball, too, football, especially with Kurt Signetti, new new Indiana football coach with all the new commitments. We have I, three or four stories in the last couple of days about just commitments for the football team. So if you want Indiana basketball or football recruiting news, Hoosier Illustrated is your spot. As always, thank you guys for listening. We'll be back with another recruiting update in the future.